Hi, this is Andrew. Thanks for joining me. Today's video covers uh, installation and use of Active Directory certificate services. We're going to install it in an Active Directory domain so that the members of the domain, the computers and system and um, devices on the domain can actually get certificates and use them and uh, be trusted within the domain. So first thing, we have three computers here. Uh, in, a, in a real environment, a lot of these would be on separate systems, but in this environment, we have a domain controller, we have a server, and in the background here, this is a Windows 10 computer that we're not going to use uh, until we get much closer to the end, so I'll set that aside. So, domain controller here, and all of these computers, obviously the domain controller is, but the other computers are members of the domain. So the server is a member server. If I go into computers, that's this server here. And there's the desktop, which is a also a domain member. Um, right now, they're just all in the, the default containers. So this is a critical piece because on this server too, I'm going to be installing Active Directory certificate services. So in order to install it and use it the way I want, it absolutely needs to be a domain member. And it needs to be a domain member before I install the certificate services. If I were to install certificate services and then try to join the domain, it's going to give me an error message saying you're not, not allowed to uh, change the name of the computer, including the domain membership, once certificate services are installed. So I can show you that error message later. Right now, uh, if I go to a command prompt, uh, you can see that I am logged in as uh, administrator in the class domain. So on the server, I'm logged in. Uh, on server two, which is right here, I'm logged in as the, as the administrator account, as domain administrator account. So now it's time to actually install certificate services. I'm gonna launch server manager several ways to get here but once it's launched i can click on uh, i can get that message out of the way and i go to manage add roles and features and from here um i can select the thing i want to install so skip through that stuff but active directory certificate services that's the critical piece um and now uh, i don't want to select anything here, especially in my environment. Uh, when I get to certificate services, things to note, the name and domain settings of this computer cannot be changed after a certificate authority CA has been installed. If you want to change this, um, change a computer name, join a domain or promote the server to a domain controller, complete these changes before installing the CA. So I'd need to cancel, go in and change it. So now I have role services and I'm going to want to actually check off each of these. The top four are the ones I care about. Uh, the web enrollment, uh, certificate authority web enrollment is an important one. And we'll see where that, how that works in a little bit. So uh, we are just all of these pieces. And if you notice, one of the things we're installing is a web server. That's not the web server we're going to use as uh, an example web server. That's a web server that's going to be used to obtain certificates. So we'll see that in a little bit as well. And there is the installation and it'll get started and we'll be back as soon as it's finished. So that was just short of five minutes, I would guess, maybe three or four minutes um, and it's completed. Um, feature installation, it's saying everything's completed. I can, I could have cl closed this earlier, but really, um, if we look here, we see this, uh, the notification here that that's letting us know that there's something to do. We can also see ADCS is li listed here, listed here. And if I wanted to take a look at the naming on this computer, uh, I see that it's server two, part of class.local as expected. But when I go here, there's no, the change is grayed out. And it says the identification of the computer cannot be changed because the certificate certification authority service is installed on this computer. So that's what we saw before. That's what we expected. Now, if for some reason I was not on the domain, uh, I would be stuck here. I wouldn't be able to do the installation and configuration the way I want and I would need to uninstall certificate services and completely back out and then join the domain 
and then reinstall it. So just, you know, be careful, make sure you've done that piece. Um, now I can go here and post deployment configuration. I can configure Active Directory Certificate Services. So uh, start out, these are the credentials I'm going to use. Um, I really want this one and then the other ones that are not grayed out. But if I try to select them all, it's going to tell me I can't do them all at the same time. So I'm just gonna start with certific Certification Authority. Um, this is where if I was not on the domain, I would not have the option for an enterprise CA. I absolutely need to be a domain member or on the domain in order to install a domain certificate authority. Uh, I can install a standalone whether I'm a, on a domain or not. Standalone is, is different and going to be not do the things that I want to do. So I need to be on the domain in order to select an enterprise CA. CA type. This is my first CA. If I had another CA already in place, I could have multiple, I could have a root and then subordinate CAs, I could add a subordinate CA. Since this is my first one, it needs to be a root. And private key, I could import and use an existing private key, but I don't have one, so I'm gonna use, uh, just create a new private key. Now I'm gonna select some options. I'll go with all the defaults here. Um, the name. I'm going to leave this as class server two CA. We'll see this later on. I could give it a better name or something, but from a certificate perspective, from this test environment perspective, this is going to be fine for us. I could call it root CA. I could call it anything that I need to. And the validity period, again, I'm gonna leave this as the default. This is the how long the certificate generated for this CA is good for. And in this case, we'll set it for five years, that's fine. Uh, this is where we'll store the databases. We'll leave that fine and we are ready to configure. And this will just take a few minutes. Once we're done, uh, I'll be able to go through the other steps. Now, something I didn't mention before, on my domain controller, we also have IIS installed and that's really gonna be my web server that I'm testing out. And um, it, again, in the real world, that wouldn't be on my dom domain controller. That would be a third server, or you know, a third, or fourth, or fifth out of how many we need. So uh, now that this is complete, I can close, and it says, "Do you want to configure additional role services?" That's where I select yes because there's other three that I couldn't check off before. Now I can select yes and go in, and that's already the certification authority is checked off, so I can do web enrollment. Um, the enrollment web service and the enrollment policy web service. So now I can go through, and a lot of these I'm going to go with, again, all of the default settings. Um, here is how we're going to log into the website that gives us uh, the certificates, uh, where we can put our certificate request and uh, get back a result. So I'm going to leave that as Windows Integrated Authentication. I wanna use domain accounts to do that. And then next up we have what kind of service account we're gonna use for the, serve, for the uh, web enrollment service. And I'm gonna use the built-in application pool identity, that's fine. And um, again, we're gonna use Windows Integrated Authentication there. Um, the server, authentication certificate is going to be this one that we've already created. And I'll select that and select next. And there's another confirmation. So we can go ahead and configure. Again, this will just take a minute or two and then we'll be ready to use things. And there we go, it's already done. Uh, configuration succeeded on all of these and I can close. And now I have a certificate authority uh, installed on this on this server in this domain. So first thing I want to do or what I want to do in this environment is I want to actually create a certificate that I can use on a web server. So I'm going to go back to my domain controller where I have um, internet information services installed and I'm going to go to my uh, my server and here I have server certificates now, previous videos, I have used a self-signed certificate. I can launch this, 
create a self-signed certificate, but now I can create a certificate request. So I'm gonna select create certificate request and I click on that and here we have um, everything we need to create that request. Now, a really important part of this is our common name. This is the name that I'm going to type into my web browser when I access this website. This name needs to be in DNS to resolve so that when I type in the name, the name matches the certificate uh, that is given out on the website. Without that match, it's going to produce an error message. So if I type in, uh, my common name is going to be www.class.local. That is, I'm on the class.local domain, so I will create a DNS entry for www. Organization, OU, this can be um, really anything we want. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna just put in uh, numbers here. And I click next, and I will go with the defaults. Uh, file name for the request, so I'm gonna put this on my desktop and call it search request. So cert rec is there, finished. And now I see it on my desktop. If I open this, it is just a certificate request. I could take this, I could go to a public authority. I could go to um, a paid authority, global sign, digicert, something like that. Log into their website with my account copy this request, paste it in, and assuming they trust that I own www.class.local or that I am that person, um, they will give me a, a certificate for that. I couldn't go in with class.local because it's not a public naming system, um, but this is what we're gonna do in our internal system. So uh, I'll just get this out of the way. So now I wanna to go to the website that exists on the um, Certificate Authority. And this website is really, it was installed as part of this, the ADCS, and its purpose is just to really provide websites because I uh, selected web enrollment. So if I go to websites, I'll see there's a cert serve website, and that's where I'm going to go. So, um, this is my IP address, 172.16.123.35. So I'm gonna open this, open Internet Explorer, 172.16.123.35. And what I need to actually do is go to cert SRV. And now it's going to prompt me to log in. Uh, the only account I have, the end um, administrator, the only account I have is administrator on the system right now, and that is one that has rights to do what I'm trying to do. So now I can do password, and it will prompt me to what do I wanna do. I wanna request a certificate, and uh, I wanna do an advanced certificate request, and I'm gonna say submit a certificate request using a base64 encoded, and that brings me here. All I need to do is go to this file, copy the request, and now I can paste it right here. And I need to say that I'm gonna use this for a web server. So I can submit that. And in just a second, it will give me a certificate that I can use. And there it is. I'm just going to download the certificate. Uh, I select download. I will save it and I will open the folder. And it's in downloads, there's my cert new. So now I can go back to my IIS and I can say complete certificate request. I'm going to go to the downloads directory, cert new, and uh, give it a friendly name. I'm going to call this my web cert. And this is, I'll put it in the web hosting uh, certificate store. Select okay. And about 30 seconds later, uh, we have our web cert here issued to www.class.local and it was issued by class server 2.ca and it expires in a year. So uh, 
One thing, since uh, I just noticed www, I still need to create that DNS entry. I'm going to go into my DNS server in this environment, which happens to be on it. Well, all of this is on the same computer as my domain controller. So I'll go to class.local um, under the forward lookup zone. I'm going to create a new host record, call it www. And you see here it has www.class.local. Um, and I need to point it back to this server because in this case, this is where my web server is. In the real world, this would be matching your web server. 172.16.123.176. So I created that DNS entry. Okay, with www in here in my DNS, I have actually one more thing that's really important to do. I still don't have a, an HTTPS site set up. If I go to default sites and I go to bindings, I still have just HTTP. I need to add the secure website. So we'll do HTTPS. That's on port 443. And I just need to select my certificate. I'm going to say it's the web cert. And then OK. And now I have, as soon as it's done, I will have my HTTPS website using the secure uh, certificate. Now. Frequently in this environment, uh, these things that I'm clicking on take some time. It doesn't happen immediately. A lot of uh, certificates involves checking websites to look for revoke revocation lists to make sure that everything's up to date. I don't know if that's exactly why this is taking a while, but um, there are a lot of times where that does happen. In this case, now I have my 443 site. So I can go to my Windows 10 system and I've rebooted this since installing certificate uh, services. Now, uh, I don't want to use Firefox or Chrome. They use separate certificate uh, authority lists. So I want to use Internet Explorer because that uses the built-in Windows certificate authority list. Um, I can go here and if I go to Internet Options and I go to Content and Certificates and I look at Trusted Root Certificates, I see this is my certificate authority that I just created. Um, so it is showing that it trusts the domain certificate authority. So if I close that and select OK and type HT, well, I'll start by going www.class.local. And you see it resolves and goes there. This is not a secure website. If I put an S there, now I'm going to the secure website. Again, it'll take a minute to go out to the internet and, that it can't get to. And once it times out, and once it times out, we're there. We have HTTPS. We don't. We didn't get a mer an error message. We look at the certificate, the uh, security report, and we see class server to CA has identified this site as www.class.local. This is saying that this certificate authority is saying that this is www.class.local, connections and encrypted, and everything looks good. And if we go back to the certificate itself, I can look at the certificate and um, see things that I wrote down. And if you remember, uh, I put ones in for a lot of these. That's where it shows up. Um, now, if I were to go to the same website, let's stop that. If I go to https colon slash slash and I do instead of the www 172 16 um, 1, 2, 3, 1, 7, 6. it's going back to the same website but it will the address here will not match the address that is shown in the certificate and I'm going to get an error message and it says the site is not secure. I look at more information. I can continue It's saying that the cert common name invalid. And you see how it's read, all kinds of errors. This is saying there's a mismatched address. The certificate presented by this website was issued for a different website's address. So it was not issued for 172, 16, 123, 176. It was issued for the www.class.local. Uh, so that's an important sit consideration when you are working in a small environment like this, a test environment. 
you might get here and put in the address and not have it work. Remember that the common name in your certificate needs to match the address in the address bar. So in this case it does, everything's good. Same certificate, they don't match and it's giving me the mismatched address error. So always make sure you're looking at errors to see if you can figure out what the actual cause is. But this is the same certificate. It was issued to www.class.local and that's not the website I went to. Um, this shows the path, the server and the uh, certificate itself. And we can even look at the server certificate and see what information was in here. And if we go through, we can even see, uh, we set the ballot period for five years. That's what's showing up there. So uh, one last thing, let's look at how we would do a certificate request and resolve a and uh, complete that using Linux. And I have a CentOS system here that I just logged into. And first thing I'm gonna do is uh, let's move this over here. I'm going to create a DNS entry for this system as well. It's possible I had one in the past, but I don't right now. So if I go here, I'm going to uh, create a centos.class.local and I'm going to point that at 172.16.123.161. Add that host. So back on Windows 10, uh, if I go and type in centos.class.local uh, it's going to spin a little bit while it's uh, looking because it is actually a self-signed certificate on there we should any second now get to a web page that gives an error message and there it is site is not secure and this is because it is an invalid certificate it is uh, a self-signed certificate that was created by this system, for the system, by the system. So we're actually gonna try to fix that now. Uh, back, at, back on my Linux system. So back on my Linux system, I'm just gonna make it a little easier to see. Uh, appearance and change this to 18 and bold, okay. So on this Linux system, first thing I need to do is um, a, a certificate request. Okay, and I'm gonna use open SSL and a request and new, this is gonna be a new key. RSA 2048 nodes key out is we're going to just put it right here on this uh, in the root home directory and I'm actually going to call it centos.key and then I'm going to do out and we're going to call it centos.csr and now it's going to do us do prompting i'll do us and in this case i will do two for all of these but i have to be careful I, if i hit enter too many times i'll skip past my common name and this is really important centos.class.local and i could easily just repeat the command and um recreate the, the, the request, but um, in this case, I don't, I didn't want to. So I have, if I do ls, I have a centos csr, centos.key, and I have a server key I made accidentally a few minutes ago. So um, I'm gonna get rid of that server key, yes. And now I will do cat on the centos.csr. And there's my certificate request. So if I can copy it, I'm going to actually bring it over here, open up a new notepad window. Uh, I don't need to save that. Paste here. And this will allow me to clean things up a little bit easier, get rid of spacing. Now I have my request. I wanna only have the request. I'm going to copy this. 
going to go back to my website here and um, see if I go home. Now I can request a certificate, uh, advanced request. We'll do it exactly the same way, in this case, paste. And I'm going to do web server and submit. And now I can download my certificate. And now I'm going to download it. Uh, uh, well, I'm going to download a base 64 and I'll save it to downloads open the folder so certain new this is the old one and if I were to open with say notepad this is what it looks like that's not going to help me going over to Linux that was the one I created for my Windows system but if I go here and open this new one I created with notepad this is actually something I can copy and I will copy this and then I go back to my um, Linux system and I'm going to do nano. This is going to be my CentOS.crt. And I open it up and I can right click and paste. And that puts the, that puts the, hopefully the entire certificate in. Let's control X and yes. And let's let's try that again. CRT, and we have we go from begin certificate, and if I scroll down, we go all the way down to the end of the certificate. Really important to verify that you got the the full thing in there. So these files are in my root directory. I need to actually move them someplace else. And first thing I'm going to do is actually put them where I have my current certificates. So if I go to the um, etc pki tls directory, in here I have my certs and my private. So um, I'm going to cd into private and in here I have a private key and the original or, or a local host key and a private key. I'm going to copy from root, uh, it is centos.key to here, and I'll call it centos.key. Now I'm gonna drop down a level and go into my certs directory. So I'll do cd certs, and in here, again, I have a cert.crt and a localhost CRT. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to copy from root my centos CRT and put it here, centos.crt. And now in here, I have my centos CRT. Now what I need to do is use those. So if I go to the configuration file, which is an etc, httpd, confd, conf d, and SSL conf. What I'm going to do is scroll through here and look for the files that are being used. And there's my document root and um, server certificate right there. And in this case, it is cert.crt, and I want to change this to centOS. That's my new certificate. And my private key is going to get changed to centOS.key. And that's it. So I can do control S, yes. And one more thing, I need to restart my service. Um, restart httpd and now it's restarted okay back to my window system i'm going to close the tab i'm actually going to close everything out and then let's reopen uh internet explorer and stop trying to get to the internet and let's do centos.class.local
And you see, we actually got to the to the website and we are showing that we trust this certificate. We trust the CentOS class.local certificate we created and configured for the website to use. Um, so we now have a functional certificate authority within our domain, within this class.local domain that we can use to create certificates that can be used on websites. And the Linux system obviously obviously is not part of the domain. It is not the, the Linux system doesn't care where the certificate comes from. What cares where the certificate comes from is the web client, the Internet Explorer in this case. Um, that is where we get the the trust of the the origin of the certificate. So uh, that's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching.